So I could do that, you know, and I, I was feeling trapped in a way, like I had to make it work. I don't want to get fired, but I didn't want him to continue. And so I was trying to split it down the middle by not being mean, but being clear that it was a no. And what he saw, I guess, was she's not like, let me see how much farther I can go. I think, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a predator. I don't know how to think, but I think that's what happened. And so I would create strategies to keep the line open because I needed him because he was the only one who let me try the idea to make the interlude a real song or let me work on the soundtrack. So I didn't want to burn the bridge. So I was trying to, he, he let me sign Capleton and Kylie Ranks, Def Jam's first reggae artist. Um, and so, you know, I thought that he was getting the message that I was good at my job and was going to leave me alone. And I kind of let my guard down because the show soundtrack was doing so well. And I thought I was sort of, I leveled up out of that, that lane where he was doing that. He hadn't done it in a while. And he told me to come upstairs to pick up a demo and he was going to order me a car. And I was like, okay, this is going to be quick. And he'd never been like, I don't know. I just didn't know he was violent. I didn't know he was capable of that level of violence. And when I went upstairs to pick up the CD, you know, which I now realized, I didn't even realize until 2017 when I read the stories of the other women in the article in the New York Times with me, I like looked up in December, 2017 and was like, oh shit, there was never a CD, was there? Like it wasn't until I read their stories that the light bulb went off 24 years later that the CD that I was looking for, that he told me to come upstairs and get when he went into another room and I end up in his bedroom because he just says, he doesn't say go to my bedroom. That would have been a red flag. He says, go down the hall, make a right in the last door and then get the CD out of the CD tray. So I do that. I'm in his room, but I'm not really thinking about that. There's nothing in the tray. And I keep yelling the names of CDs on the shelf. And I'm thinking, you know, this is weird that he can't just tell me the name. And then the next thing I know, he's, you know, rolling up on me, he is naked wearing a condom. And it was a physical fight that I lost. Um, you know, I honestly think about it whenever I do a push up in the gym, that like lack of upper body strength that I needed in that moment, I didn't have it. Um, it was a fight. I said, no, I cried, I screamed, I yelled, I kicked, I did all the things. And then I realized I was trapped and then I froze. I just froze and I essentially complied with my captor because I realized I was alone in this apartment with this guy who was violent and who didn't care. And it was a different version of him than I'd ever seen before. It's kind of like the version of him that we saw in that video that his daughter uploaded where he was yelling. I was like, that is the guy I saw that night. Right, and right. I just froze because it sort of felt like this could get worse if I'm really, he actually said, stop fighting stop fighting in a very cold voice. And I realized that it was already as bad as it could be, but maybe it could even be worse. And I didn't want to know how worse, how much worse it could be. So I just kind of like flatlined, you know, like a possum. I don't know what to say, like a little, like an animal that plays dead. You know, I feel like that's what happened, you know? And I, you know, and so, you know, I went on and made other records, but of course that changed my level of confidence. And, and so I was just, again, happy to be in the business still, happy to be making records, happy to be contributing to the culture that I love to this day. But I didn't feel like I could stand up for myself.